Hi, it's Kasha McDaniel, and I am a home stager decorator, and you're listening to the Creative Home Podcast, where I talk about staging and decorating and all things associated with your home. So take a listen. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode. My name is Kasha, and today we're going to be talking about decorating with spoon flour. And if you haven't heard of spoon flour, it's a company that basically ha- offers um, and combines basically um, Etsy products um, to consumers. And spoon flour has things like fabric and wallpapers and home decor. Um, that you can use, you can design yourself. Some people have actually designed their own fabric. Maybe there's a special one that your child drew or some a picture and you want to put that on fabric. You can totally do that through spoon flour. Um, Or you can use others worldwide. And so that's how they bring everybody together. And in Durham, North Carolina, they actually literally just expanded their spoon flour um, warehouse there. Um, I want to say a lot of thousands of square feet um, just to make up for the demand that when people are home for the pandemic, they're wanting to decorate and update their house and spoon flower is a fantastic way to do that. So if you haven't looked them up, um, that's one thing that you may want to do if you're interested in doing that kind of stuff. But let me share with you a couple of the things that they do offer. So first of all, they offer, I mentioned wallpaper. Um, So you can use all different kinds of unique designs. If you're looking for something that's just a little bit different, um, take a look at Spoon Flower and you can really use that wallpaper in so many different places when it comes to decorating your home. Um, You can put it um, maybe behind your desk. Uh, Maybe your desk is kind of in a little closeted kind of area and that's a great background to put on uh, a wall that maybe kind of blah, you know, and you want some color, right? But you don't want to be painting it. Um, So that's something that you can use. There are different kinds of wallpaper designs to put that by your desk. Um, Another area if if you have a small bathroom, like maybe you have um, just the toilet area, maybe it's a closed in area. Cause maybe I have a master bathroom where the toilet's kind of behind its closed door. So it's like a little sectioned off area. Um, and you can use that wallpaper to put it, you know, behind the toilet on that little wall there, you know, or maybe you have a small powder room. You can use the wallpaper there. Um, maybe another place could be in the foyer, the entryway. Um, maybe it's a small one, but you want to add some color in there too. That's a fantastic place to add wallpaper or within a closet. Maybe you have a walk-in closet and it's a long, narrow one. Um, and what you can do is you can have maybe a, a standing mirror or a, you know, have a full length mirror at the end and then the whole wall behind it use wallpaper back there. So there are just so many ways that you can use wallpaper in your home to kind of spiff it up a little bit, you know, so that, that way maybe you have a mural that you want to see. Maybe you want to have a beach scene. Maybe you want to have little footprints, whatever it is. Maybe you're a cat lover, a dog lover, whatever. There's so many different kinds of wallpaper that you can pick from at Spoonflower and take a look. Okay, so another thing um, is I mentioned fabrics. So you can use it to get um, and make duvet covers. Um, I think they even might sell duvet covers. I'm not sure. But if you are into duvets, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, um, and you can, you know, maybe you're looking for something unique for your duvet cover. Maybe um, you want something decorative. Maybe you have an Airbnb and you want something just different. Maybe because you're at a, you know, beach area, you know. So that's something um, that you can do. Um, I talked about more about duvets and bed sheets in episode 88. So you can take a listen there if you want to get an idea. What the heck is she talking about a duvet? <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can get fabric to make a duvet cover, throw pillows. Oh my gosh, there's so many different kind of fabrics you can use for throw pillows. Um, especially if you're going for, you know, the boho chic or, you know, or it's just something different and you just want to, you know, worldwide type of, you know, um, kind of sh- feeling that you want to have in your home. You know, those are fantastic places and ideas that you can get fabric from um, Spoonflower. 
And the last thing with fabrics, I don't know, I've never heard of this until I looked up spoon flower, was the art of furoshiki. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, it's Japanese. Um, but it's the idea of wrapping gifts in fabric, which is very eco-friendly. So you're not using wrapping paper uh, because most wrapping paper, believe it or not, is not recyclable. It has to go in the trash. It is not paper. Um, and I found this out actually from my friend, Dave Lambert in Moore County. Um, he actually did a little video right before Christmas and talked about recycling paper ribbons and bows and, and things like that. And if you crumple up the paper and it keeps its shape, like it stays small, then that's paper and that's recyclable. But if you crumple it up and it kind of expands on itself again, that is not recyclable. You just have to throw it in the trash. So there's an eco tip right there for you. So the kind of um, wrapping paper is like if it's a kind of glossy kind of thing to it it's more than likely not paper and you have to throw it in, in the real trash um, not recyclable so furoshiki is a way to wrap gifts in fabric and I had never thought of that uh, but I've seen it lately where um, I've seen lots of pictures on like Pinterest and things like that about it um, and I know gosh my girls love to have um, fabric around just to play with and make things out of, make Barbie doll clothes out of and, and things like that. But that's what they do with it. But I have scraps of fabric everywhere. Who would have thought to wrap them gifts that way? And it's so easy to do it. You don't need tape. You don't need any stitching, no sewing required. You just kind of wrap it up like a bundle, um, tie it in a nice little bow and you're done. It's wrapped and it's cute. And sometimes they have the cutest prints, especially at spoon flower, but you can find it at any fabric store. If you go to, um, a couple of those, like, you know, Hobby Lobby and, play, and places like that. Um, Joanne Fabrics, another great place. Um, so, yeah, so if you have those kind of scraps of fabric and you have a gift that you want to give to somebody that's, you know, very eco-conscious and everything like that, that's another great way to use those types of things to wrap gifts and still look really pretty. You don't have to worry about, you know, wrapping paper and tape and finding scissors. <laughs> well, maybe you might need scissors depending on the size of the gift, right? <laughs> right. All right. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Decorating with spoon flower. There are so many ways that you can use that. Um, take a look at their website um, and you can see what things can be shipped to you that you can use in your home to change up throw pillows, change up the look in a, a room or something like that. That's another great way to decorate with those things. So uh, as for your German tip of the day, um, they don't, I haven't seen um, much fabric stores, plus they're closed anyway <laughs> with the pandemic. Um, but there is a store that unfortunately right now is closed, but it's, it's a basically, it's a decorating store called The Depot. Um, I haven't seen anything quite like this in the States. And what it is, is basically they, it's little decorating elements. Um, so they'll have like vases and trays and balls and, and um, pine cones and all sorts of decorative little things. And it changes by the season, obviously. And at first I thought it was kind of like a Kirkland's, but it's not. Um, what they do is they give you an idea of how to put it all together, but everything else is not put together. You have to put it together and you have to be the creative one to go in there and put it together. And I'm looking here going, oh my God, there's so many options. So if you're not the creative type, then this, this store will probably just scare you and make you run away. Um, but if you are inspired by, you know, oh, I'll take this, you know, stem of leaves and I'll match it up with this, you know, a couple of pine cones, and throw it in a vase, add some lights in there and voila, we're done, you know? So they do at least give you an idea of how to put this stuff together. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool store to be able to go in. I know I found myself, a wander in there and just be just overwhelmed and I'm like, okay, I have to leave. I can't think no. And then other days I walk in and I'm like, oh yes, I can totally put this together. I see where I can do this and do that. And, you know, I already have this part. Maybe I can add, you know, I have something else in my home. So, so it's a great store, um, just to kind of put things together, a tray for maybe a coffee table or on the window ledges here in Germany, the window ledges are really wide. They're gosh, uh, six inches wide at least. So you can put something on the window ledge, um, to decorate it. Uh, so yeah, so it's really neat. Um, so yeah, so that's what I have for you. And as far as, um, other things, it comes to 
decorating um, and getting your house ready to sell. If you haven't checked out my free ebook, I have it out there. I'll put the link in the show notes um, when it talks about 10 things you can do now to get your house ready to um, sell. So think actually it's called 10 things you should do before selling your house. That's what it's called. Sorry. Um, I'm getting mixed up with a webinar that I have coming up. So take a look at that. I'll put the link in there so you can sign up for your free ebook. If you are selling your house this spring, this will help you if you haven't staged a house before and you're kind of curious, well, what I need to focus on. These are 10 things that you can work on right now to get it ready. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. I will talk to you later.